So I will talk about linearization. Most of the systems are nonlinear, and when we control these systems at specific equilibrium points, we need to linearize those nonlinear systems on those equilibrium points. So let's consider this nonlinear system x dot equals to f of x and u, and its output is h, x, and u. u is the input, x is the state. Okay, so first of all, we need to determine an equilibrium point um, that we want to control the system on that equilibrium point. For example, right, so you can consider this pendulum. Um, are you going to control this pendulum on the backward position or upward position? It has two equilibrium points that I'm going to show in a second. First of all, the formal definition of the equilibrium point, let u bar be a constant. We are setting the control signal to, or input to this dynamical system to be a constant. We then say that x bar is an equilibrium point that satisfies this equation. And basically here, x dot is zero, so motion freezes uh, at equilibrium points. So specifically, if you f uh, f consider the dynamics of this pendulum, with unity mass, unity inertia, everything is unity. So we have this simple dynamics, x1 that equals to x2, x2 that equals to minus sine x1 plus u. I am going to set my control action, the torque that you apply to the motor here, to zero. Then we look at zero, zero, basically looking this part, equals to x2 bar minus sine x1 bar plus zero, control is zero. So from the first line, basically x2 bar is zero, and x1 bar is k multiplied by pi, and here is k is zero, one, two, so on and so forth. So if we look at this picture, little picture here, the pendulum, x1 denotes the angle, and x2, which is uh, x1 dot, is the angular velocity. So at the equilibrium, angular velocity is zero, which makes sense, right? Motion freezes. And x1 bar can be like this, up the downward position or upward position. So we have two equilibrium points when u bar is zero for this pendulum system. All right, so let's say we would like, we are interested to control this pendulum on one of the equilibrium points, then we need to linearize it on those equilibrium on the on the selected equilibrium point. All right, this brings us to this linearization process. I will go step by step. First of all, you need a linear time invariant model of an equilibrium point. So let's first define delta x to be x, the actual state of this nonlinear system minus x bar, the equilibrium point that you are interested. U is u minus u bar, and delta y is basically y minus h x bar u bar that we are using this h equation. Then for an equilibrium point, we need A, B, C, D matrices. So A matrix is basically df over dx, evaluated at x bar and u bar on the equilibrium point that interest. B is df over du, again, on this equilibrium point. Likewise, for C, we are using not f, but h, the output equation, dh over dx, evaluated at x bar and u bar, and d is dh over du, evaluated at x, x bar and u bar. So here, basically, this will be an n by n matrix, if you have n state variables. If you have m input variables, this matrix will be n by m. Likewise, if you have, basically, um, p outputs, this will be p by n matrix, and this will be p by m uh, matrix. So the structure, right, everything is uh, looking similar to each other, df over dx, df over du, dh over dx, and dh over du. Let's look at, let's consider a, um, basically a vector like this, which is n by one, and let's consider a vector, a vector m by one, then basically this is d phi 1 over v1, dot 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 d phi 1, we are using the first one over the dm, first we are going from 1 to m, and then we are going to repeat the uh, same thing for other, basically, um, 
phi 2, phi 3, all the way up to phi n. The final line will be d phi n over d v1. We are basically taking this partial derivative with respect to v1 to v n. So, for example, if we apply this process to the pendulum, uh, let's linearize this pendulum at basically the upward position, like this. So we are looking at the equilibrium point, which is pi, 180 degrees, and zero. This is for the uh, uh, angle of the pendulum, and this is for this angular velocity. And I am choosing u bar equals to zero. By applying certain, uh, basically, constant inputs, you can linearize the pendulum at, for example, 45 degrees, 90 degrees, and basically you can create uh, interesting equilibrium points. But let's say we would like to control the pendulum in the upward position, which is an unstable equilibrium point, as compared to downward position, which is a stable equilibrium point. Um, we need A, B, C, D matrices. So the A matrices, basically, I am basically applying this along with this definition. We need DF1, DX1, DF1, DX2, then DF2, dx1, df2, dx1. So our f, basically this, has two functions. This is function 1, f1, and this is f2. And since we have two state variables, this will be a 2 by 2 matrix. So let me move here. The first function is f1 is x2. f1 over dx1, basically dx2 over dx1, this will be 0. The second one, we are evaluating df1 with respect to dx2. df1 was x2. Partial derivative of x2 with respect to itself is 1. Then we are moving the second function here. We are evaluating df2 with respect to dx1, which is derivative of this with respect to x1 is minus cosine of x1. And then df2 over dx2, there is no dependence on x2, so this will be 0. And basically, we cannot leave any of these that depends on x1, x2, u. We need to insert equilibrium point uh, values here so that we are going to have constant matrices. So the, basically, we, when we insert these, we here need x1. x1's equilibrium point was pi. So minus cosine of pi is 1. So here is your nice A matrix. Um, for your linear system. And I am going to do the same thing for B. Uh, B is basically we are taking this function and evaluating the first one with respect to u. There is no dependence on u on the first equation, so we have zero. And here u appears here, so df2 over du is one. And although I didn't mention about an output here, Let's say our output is the angle, so h x u is x1, the output of the system. Let's say we are measuring the angle of the pendulum. Then C matrix becomes dh over dx in a similar fashion, 1 and 0, and the D matrix becomes dh over du. There is no dependence on u, so it becomes 0. So once we do all of these, we need to keep, we need to remember that x is the actual state of the system for example x1 changing like this but when we linearize this system we need to well establish delta x delta u and delta y so for this pendulum based linearized at upward position like this the x is the actual state minus pi over 2 so um, and this is important, right? So the actual state is x. So when we approach to the equilibrium upward position, delta x goes to zero. That's why, right? So this is like zero degrees, actual x1 and upward position. It is pi degrees, but delta of x is basically approaches the zero as we go to the upward position. So that's why we have this um, equilibrium point for this linearized system. Delta u is easier, so u minus 0 since we choose u bar to be 0. And finally, delta y is y minus h, x bar, and u bar. Looking at our h, basically, 
h x bar u bar is x1 bar x1 bar is basically pi so we have delta y is y minus pi all right so we modeled the system we have a b c d matrices then we can design a controller to con to stabilize this uh, pendulum on the upward position as this being said if you want to control this a nonlinear system toward multiple equilibrium points of interest for example for this pendulum if you would like to control n not only the upward position but also the you know downward position such that we would like to fully operate this pendulum between its equilibrium points then you need uh, to do more for if you want to control a nonlinear system in multiple linearized points then please watch gain scheduled control on my channel i'm going to write here gain scheduled control watch this gain scheduled control video that will teach you how to control a system in multiple equilibrium points if you want to control a system on a nonlinear system on one equilibrium point on the uh, however you can just take this a b c d matrices design your controller and go from there all right i hope you find this video helpful let me know if you want me to cover any other topics leave comments so we can go from there take care